Hey everyone, it's Marianne from the New York City Organization of Public Service Retirees. So I want to go over um, a little uh, misinformation um, being spread by the UFT. Who thought that would still be continuing? Um, in the meeting of September 22nd, the UFT held a meeting. Um, it was like an open town hall with um, Michael Mulgrew, the president of the UFT, where he was taking questions um, from the retirees. And uh, this was a very misleading point. So I want to play the audio and then I want to tell you what's misleading about it. So listen to this. Um, joining us now is Lucille uh, Federer. Lucille, you're on with Michael. Hello, Michael. Um, I had done a lot of research of the comparison between the new plan and the advantage plan. And in the research for the medical advantage plan, um, and I think you alluded to this, was that um, you have an opportunity within one year to exit out of the plan and go, go back into your original plan without a penalty. After that right. point, that it, um, you could be denied coverage by your existing, uh, by let's say the, the, the uh, senior plan due to pre-existing condition. And that was the one thing that was very concerning to me because if I had to say, I couldn't exit out, let's say every year in during the November period, then what do I do? So that's incorrect. Um, under Medicare, there are no ACA protections. Um, this this is re the reason why uh, a teacher, a garbage man, and a clerk should not be handling insurance. And clearly Jeff Sorkin, his welfare fund guy, doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. So Medicare Advantage plans... And let me just pull up the right article. So there are only four states that require either continuous or annual guaranteed issue protections for Medigaps. For all beneficiaries in traditional Medicare ages 65 and older, regardless of medical history, guaranteed issue protections prohibit the insurers from denying a Medigap policy to eligible applicants, including people with pre-existing conditions such as diabetes or heart disease. And those four states are Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, and New York. And if you are not in one of those states, you can be denied going back into a Medigap plan. 
Now, the other thing that's also of importance is that this talks about getting back into a traditional Medicare and supplement age 65 and older. And why is that important? Now, these articles are from Kaiser Health. So if you were to search Kaiser Health, this article that I'm looking at right now is called Medigap Enrollment and Consumer Protections Vary Across States. And this is written by Christina Bacuti. The one, the other one that's important um, is also on Kaiser Health. And let's see, insurance commissioners reject calls to limit seniors' Medigap policies. This is also, this was from December. Um, and this is uh, everything we've looked at shown an increasing cost sharing does not stop people from seeking Medicare, says Bonnie Burns, training and policy specialist at California Health Advocates who serve on the NAIC committee has studied this issue for a year. So this is where they're looking to see if they increase cost share was supposed to make savings. Gee, that sounds familiar, right? Because whenever Michael Mulgrew says, well, the MLC voted that. Hey, buddy, maybe you think the rest of us are stupid, but you hold almost half of the two-thirds share vote that can pass a motion. You are the MLC, Mr. Mulgrew. You and Henry Garrido can pretty much control everything, right? And the rest of us are a bunch of morons. Thanks. Um, so in this document, they report that just because you're increasing co-share, co-payment, co-share, co-insurance, doesn't mean you're going to prevent people from using their health insurance. They they may not go to the doctor, but then you're going to pay more because they didn't seek the care that they needed when they needed it. And that's exactly what you guys are doing to us now. Um, you know, people buy Medigap policies because they need the treatment. Advocates of increased cost sharing point out studies that show seniors with Medigap coverage tend to use more Medigap services than those without it. And that was proven false. Insurance commissioners were supposed to recommend specific cost sharing changes for these Medigap plans with the first dollar coverage to reduce Medicare spending for unnecessary medical treatment. As the law says, encourage the use of appropriate physician services. The, re the law requires a recommendations to be based on peer reviewed studies or current successful managed care practices. But after a year and a half, research and discussion, they came up empty-handed. None of the studies provided a basis for the design of nominal cost sharing that would encourage or use, use of the appropriate physician services, the letter said. Many of the studies cautioned that added cost sharing would result in delayed treatments and could increase Medicare program costs later. Example of increased expenditures for emergency room visits and hospitalizations and result in adverse health outcomes for vulnerable populations, i.e. your elderly, chronically ill, and low income, which is exactly what we have been saying. You know, the New York City retirees, the ones that you guys keep saying don't know what the hell we're talking about. Um, so also there are concerns with getting into a Medigap plan um, is harder for younger beneficiaries. So this is a story about a 53-year-old Californian who is facing another debacle where he doesn't have the money for his share of the medical bills and he can't buy the supplemental to cover the insurance because he's in one of those states that he can't get into it. So when we tell you that Medicare Advantage um, might be okay for healthier populations or younger retirees, that it's not okay for everyone. And it's not okay depending upon where you live. So if you put people, especially for the very first time, you enroll them or auto enroll them like you're trying to do, get them into a Medicare Advantage plan, they may not be able to get back into traditional Medicare with a supplement if they have a pre-existing condition. And no Michael Mulgrew and no Mr. Jeff Sorkin, you're absolutely wrong when you say that the ACA protects you in Medicare. It does not. Fact check. Kaiser Health. Look it up, buddies. Have a good night.